Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Michael Tic Tac, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about frogs. These little guys may not be the most intimidating creatures in the world, but don't let that fool you. Because in the world of Pokemon, frogs are some of the best ones out there. Having said that, there are only four available in Paldea, and I wanted to see if a team of frogs have what it takes to defeat every gym leader, slay every titan, and conquer every team star base in the game. Let's not forget that hardcore Nuzlocke rules will be used in the run, and terrestrialization will be banned as well. So with the rules out of the way, let's begin. Let's cut to the chase. We all know that Director Clavel has three starter Pokemon for us, but they aren't frogs, so they're useless to me. There's no need to panic though, as I have an egg in my possession, and once it's hatched, it gives us a better starter than these duds anyway. Froakie. It's a female, so she gets a name Tiana, and with a modest nature, we're in business. Tiana then spends a bit of time killing every single Psyduck that crosses our path to boost our special attack further, thanks to their special attack Eevees they give, until finally we head to the entrance of Mesa Goza to take on Nimona. Her Fukuoka has no hope of surviving a water gun from Tiana, and after it goes down, the EXP we get takes us to level 14, allowing Tiana to learn Water Pulse. So when Nimona's Pormi comes out, it doesn't even get a chance to use its stress like Thundershock as Tiana one-shots it with a water pulse. After an eternity of pressing the A button over and over, we go to Contondo City, enter the gym, play a bootleg Rocket League from Wish, and now we're ready to face Katie. Well, not quite. There are some preparations I want to make first. Top of our list is to catch ourselves a Tad Bob, who gets the name Pepe. However, just a little further up, we can climb up this tower and get a rare candy. Um... I mean, that is nice, but that's not what I was looking for. Turns out I needed to go to the next tower, and at the top of the tower we can find a Thunderstone, which can be used straight away on Pepe, evolving him into a powerful Belly Bolt. But we aren't done just yet. We continue our adventure, and just over here is the TM for Thunderbolt, which is kinda nuts to be honest. Also, while we are here, nearby we can find the TM for Surf, which is a decent move for Tiana. One last thing we do is grab the leftovers from Medali City, and now we're ready. Nimble lends a struggle bug, which doesn't hurt, but does drop our special attack stat. Although it doesn't matter, as the Thunderbolt one-shots anyway. Tarantula gets struck with a Thunderbolt, but the spider survives and bug bites Pepe for minimal damage. We then fry the spider with a second Thunderbolt, and Katie is down to her last Pokemon, Teriosa. The bear hits us with a Fury Cutter, but is punished straight away, getting paralyzed from the static. Pepe then Thunderbolts the bear doing decent damage, before outspeeding and going for a second Thunderbolt, which is just short from the KO. Teriosa goes for a second Fury Cutter, but Pepe just laughs, before striking a bolt of lightning on the bear, taking it out. The Stony Cliff Titan Clawf is now our focus, and conveniently Tiana can evolve just before the fight. We do make a quick pit stop at the Deli Bird shop, getting a hold of some Mystic Water, which will power up our water moves. Battle me. I am mighty. How about no, mate? Clawf jumps off the wall, shakes the ground, starts a battle, and then just goes down to a single surf. Kinda underwhelming. In the second phase, we go for a water pulse, as we don't want to trigger its anger shell ability, while Claw hits us back with a rock tomb, which hurts and does drop our speed. This allows the giant crab to outspeed and go for a rock smash in the second turn, which leaves Tiana on 8 HP. That was close, but Tiana makes the Claw pay for that with his life as she surfs the crab away. Brassius from Artisan City has the next gym badge we want, and we actually have no preparations needed for this fight. Well, we do collect some flowers beforehand, I guess. Alright Brassius, prepare yourself mate. Pepe's in charge, and Megatrain from Petty Lil do laughable damage, while we can take it out with three Swifts. Small of his next, and the Razor Leaves don't hurt much, while Swifts from Pepe get the job done. Last is a Pseudo Rudo, but we can trade blows for a few turns, and thanks to Static, we paralyze the fake tree, and then with our leftovers, while protected between turns, we can stay healthy, outlasting the Pseudo Rudo. Brassius looks like he's lost the plot, but he gives us our badge, so I don't care. Bombardier has been causing a scene, so we go to investigate the situation. Okay, do I even want to know where those boulders are coming from? Oh no! Ah! Hold up, you're watching this and you haven't subscribed? I mean, how are you going to say no to this little guy, huh? This stupid stalk is usually a problem for most of my runs, mainly because for some reason, you don't get to heal between phases. But with Pepe, this fight is basically a meme. See what I did there, Pepe? 
Meme? Yeah, I'm hilarious. Bombardier plucks Pepe for low damage. Meanwhile, a Thunderbolt almost ends the first phase in a single turn. One more pluck comes away before a second Thunderbolt forces a Stalk to flee, eat some herbs, power up, and come back for more. It makes no difference for Pepe though, as two more Thunderbolts send the Titan to its grave. Now it's time we turn our attention to Team Star, heading to Giacomo's base, but without a third frog, we can't get in. The timing couldn't be better, however, as we go to South Providence Area 5, which is where the swampy region of Paldea is. In this place, we can come across a crow gunk who is caught and gets the name Kermit. Why is this good? Well, because Kermit is a fighting type, and fighting types are super effective against dark types, which is what Giacomo specializes in. Okay, so, um, I kinda made a small mistake. Yeah, I accidentally overleveled Kermit while doing some auto battles. So all that talk about using a fighting type against Giacomo, out the window. We enter the base, beat up some Grunt's Pokemon, and watch as Giacomo comes out on his Starmobile. Pornite hits Pepe with a Fury Cutter, which is fine as we respond with a Thunderbolt, KOing it in one hit. Giacomo then brings out his car, who can metal sound Pepe, harshly dropping his special defense, before we land a Thunderbolt for decent damage. We protect for leftovers health, and then Pepe gets hit with a Snarl, which does not hurt, but drops our special attack, meaning a Thunderbolt now does even less damage. Another Snarl comes our way, dropping our special attack even more, but we slack off, healing us back up. Due to our lowered stats, I switch in Tiana who gets Snarled, before Pepe comes back in, getting Metal Sounded. The Starmobile goes for another Metal Sound, leaving us at minus 4 in special defense, while a Thunderbolt brings the car below half health. Our special defense is way too low to stay in, so Tiana comes back in, getting Snarled, and then Pepe comes straight back in, getting hit with a Wicked Talk, and then falling asleep. We have no choice but to stay in, getting Wicked Talked while still asleep. Then we get Wicked Talked again while still being asleep. Then we get Wicked Talked again while Pepe is still sleeping. Another Wicked Talk lands, leaving us on 3 HP, but he wakes up just in time and can heal up with a slack off. The Starmobile keeps Wicked talking, but we can slack off again and then back to back Thunderbolts can strike the car down, giving us a win over Giacomo. Before we can do our collab with Iono, Nimona is desperate for a battle, so we grant her her wish. Tiana has some fun and surfs a rock rough to its death. Poor me is next, but can't survive a surf either. Now it's Krakola, and surprisingly it hung on after a super effective surf, but it does go for a yawn, so we kill the croc before falling asleep. Iona then has us playing hide and seek, but we pass with ease, and then we drag her out for a battle. Wattrell goes for a pluck, doing a measly 5 HP of damage to Pepe, before a single thunderbolt sends a bird to the afterlife. Luxo comes in and bites Pepe, but we mud shot the cat, doing good damage and lowering its speed, which means now we're faster, and a second mud shot ends its life. Now it's Belly Bolt, but Pepe proves it's a superior frog, taking it out with mud shots. Iona's Ace Miss Magus is a little more annoying as it has Levitate, making it immune to ground moves, and then when it terrestrializes, it resists my electric moves. But its hexes don't hurt too much, and resistant Thunderbolts do surprisingly decent damage back. As usual, I protect between turns for the leftovers recovery, and then when I get really low, I can slack off healing me back up. With some persistence, we can land enough Thunderbolts on the Electric Ghost, taking it out. Team Star is back in my mind, with Mela and her fire Pokemon needing to be dealt with. But before we pay her a visit, we go to her side of desert, grabbing ourselves a TM for Rain Dance, which honestly makes this next fight so much easier. We gate crash Mela's base, teach her Grunt's Pokemon a lesson, and then we watch her come out screaming, thinking she has a chance. Torkoal leads, and with its drought ability, it can set up the sun, so Tiana uses her first turn going for a Rain Dance, not only weakening fire moves, as you can see from the pathetic damage a Flame Wheel does, but it also powers up our water moves, as you can see as we one-shot the turtle with a surf. Mela sends in the car, who screeches Tiana harshly dropping out defense, but Tiana stays aggressive, doing insane damage with a rain-boosted surf. The Starmobile tries to take out Tiana with a blazing torque, but fails miserably, meaning a second surf from our frog can flood the car, sending it to the junkyard. Now that we've dealt with Mela, it's now time we add another frog to our ranks. This Pokemon can actually be found in Kitakami, but I'm not really keen to have to go through all those cutscenes and dialogue. So I planned ahead and I got myself an egg that we can hatch. Cue the Sonic music.
Poliwag hatches from the egg and we give our little tadpole the name Slippy. However, we aren't quite done with the little guy as we level him up to 26, getting him to evolve into a Poliwell. But before it even gets a chance to breathe, we use a water stone and now it becomes a mean looking Poliwrath. There's one last thing I want and if we head up the tower here, we can find the TM for Drain Punch, which is perfect for our next big battle. Well, maybe calling it a big battle is an overstatement. It's a lurking still Titan Orthworm that we need to take out. And the thing is, this metal slide can really do nothing against our drain punching Poliwrath. The worm tries its best to escape, but we can hunt it down and we even let it power itself up with some herbs. But it changes nothing as Slippy just drain punches it over and over until it falls. The tropical city of Cascarafa is our next point of interest, although with sandstorms raging in the middle of the city, the word tropical may not be an accurate way to describe this place. Just our luck, the moment we arrive, Kofu leaves the gym, forgetting his wallet, and we're tasked to return it to him. Although, giving a child a wallet with $50,000 in it is probably not the smartest thing in the world either. We arrive at Port Marinada and are greeted by one of Kofu's apprentices. What do you want? Old man Kofu is in the middle of some super duper important ingredient buying. Um, are you alright there mate? So do you have something super important to say to us busy folk or what? Yeah, it's super important. Super important, eh? We'll see about that. Maybe a battle will shut your mouth. Okay, why in the world did Game Freak make this person such an absolute for? On the bright side, it does make it all the more satisfying when I beat up his float tool and his clauncher. Kofu gets his wallet back, we buy some seaweed for $35,000, and now we can head back to Kaskarafa to take on the big man himself. Well, that's what I thought, but we bump into Rika from the Elite Four first. What's this now? Is this that kid that I've been hearing so much about? Hey kiddo, I've heard you're like way too good at battling, yeah? Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, you're mocking me, huh? Okay, Rika, I won't forget this encounter anytime soon, mate. Once outside, Kofu is waiting and we waste no time starting the battle. The loser Aqua cuts our boy Pepe, but it ain't phase, and Thunderbolts the fish to its death. While Trio lands a critical hit headbutt, but Pepe is too thick and then zaps it straight back to Kofu with a Thunderbolt. Last is Crabobnable, so Slippy switches in, dodging a crab hammer, and then can trade blows with the crab until the crab has had enough and crumbles. The Poison Specialist Atticus and his crew from Team Star are next on our agenda, so we prepare for this battle by equipping a Petra Berry... Uh, um, okay, we don't have one. This is kind of embarrassing. Okay, this is what we're looking for. Perfect. Atticus then gets his base raided, we beat up his Grunt's Pokemon, and then the ninja comes out to try and stop us. Really? Was the backflip necessary, mate? Slippy can bulk up in front of his gun tank before taking a Venoshock pretty well. We go for a second bulk up, getting stronger, and this time the gun tank uses Toxic, badly poisoning us, but it's nothing a Petra Berry can't fix. Slippy goes on the attack, and we can crush the gun tank with a big earthquake. Muck is next, although an earthquake can deal with a purple gum. Now it's Rever Room, and Atticus seems kind of confident with this choice. This next move is as splendid as as it is insidious. Behold, as it gnaws its target away. Yeah, nice try, mate. Okay, my turn. <laughs> Last is the Starmer Bill, who can Noxious talk Sleepy for some decent damage, but our frog responds with a big earthquake, hurting the car. A second Noxious Torx lands and then poisons us, so we hit the Starmobile with one more Earthquake, almost taking it out before having to switch Kermit in, who can remove the toxic spikes and then gets Noxious Torx. This makes it safe for Pepe to come in, who takes a spin out well as he switches in and then a Noxious Torx before delivering a Thunderbolt, destroying the car and defeating Atticus. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the new level cap, Tiana can finally evolve into a powerful Greninja. She looks amazing, but Tiana will need to take the back seat for now as the next battle is against Larry. Slippy is in control once again, using Bulk Up on the Kamala, who then goes straight for a yawn. Doubling down, we Bulk Up again, and the Kamala goes for another yawn for whatever reason. We do fall asleep, and I forgot to equip a Chester Berry, so we stay asleep. Although Slippy must be sleepwalking, as he manages to dodge a slam, and then on the next turn, he can wake up and drain punch the Koala. The Dance Mask comes in, but one drain punch later, and the snake is put out of its misery. Finally, it's Seraptor, and even though we're intimidated, we can survive an aerial ace from the bird, and then drain punch it to the next dimension, giving us the win.
There is a random Nimona battle that comes up, but Slippy can bulk up a couple of times on the Lycan Rock and then drain punches the wolf. Pormo comes in, only to be earthquaked. Gumi is also sent to an early grave from an earthquake. Last is Skeledurge, and this crocodile somehow survives a plus two super effective earthquake? Um, how? Slippy takes a talk song like a champ and then follows up with a second earthquake, getting the win. Straight after the fight, Kermit does evolve, and now our team is at full power. Rhyme and a ghost are next up, but we have some grinding to do first. The easiest way to do this is to get some ham, mayo, mustard and pickles from the deli at Mesagoza, then head to this area next to Ortega's Team Star Fairy Base, setting up a picnic with our frogs. Now we can make a sandwich, specifically a hand sandwich, which once eaten, will spawn chances and blisses in the overworld. Which, if you don't know, give insane experience when defeated. Okay, now we're ready for Rhyme. Tiana and Kermit take the lead, with Kermit shadow punching Burnett before Burnett retaliating with the shadow sneak. Tiana then goes for a surf, which can eliminate the Burnett, break the Mimikyu's disguise, and then even heal Kermit due to its dry skin ability. Mimikyu then sets up a light screen, ending the first round. Tiana then can night slash the Houndstone, while Mimikyu takes aim at Tiana, going for a slash. Kermit then goes for a poison jab, but it's not quite enough for the KO, while Houndstone almost kills Tiana with a huge play rough, leaving her on 18 HP. Playing it safe, Pepe comes in, eats a slash from Mimikyu, before Kermit can take it out with a second poison jab. Houndstone goes for a play rough, but Pepe is just too thick and it doesn't hurt that much. Toxtricity now enters the stage, and Kermit is so close to ending its life with a sucker punch, but it does go for a discharge, taking out his own teammate Houndstone, while both Kermit and Pepe survive. Pepe then strikes down the lizard with a thunderbolt, and Rhyme has been defeated. Titan Hunting is back on the menu, and Slippy has been given the contract to eliminate the Quaking Earth Titan. The task is simple for our frog, as we just drain punch the robot elephant a few times in phase 1, and then in the second phase, drain punches and fire fangs from Arvin's Scovillian are just too much for the iron treads. So, remember at the start of the game, I had Tiana take out a bunch of Psyducks in order to get her special attack EVs up? Well, throw that all out the window, as we want our girl to be a physical attacker now. So the first thing we need to do is collect as many Houndry berries as possible, which can be found in the overworld. You see, these berries reduce the Pokemon special attack EVs by 10 for everyone consumed, making it perfect to get rid of the unwanted special attack EVs. Then we travel to Contondo City, and in a nearby field is the Adamant Mint that we can get our hands on, which reduces special attack and increases physical attack. Last but not least, we head to the Chansey store and purchase as much protein as we can afford. And now we just need to collect the TM for Sword Sands, and from Alphonata City's Pokemon Center, we can also grab this TM. Yep, Liquidation. Before we take on the Gym Leader Tulip, we can warm up on Nimona and her Pokemon first. Tiana Sword Sands is on the Lycan Rock, and then goes on a bit of a rampage. Lycan Rock, Liquidated. Poor Mont, Liquidated. Sligo, Night Slashed. And Terrestrial Skeledurge, Liquidated. Yep, I've created a monster. Tulip now graces us with her presence and says some kind of inappropriate things, if I'm being honest. Hee hee hee. I must say, you are quite the cute challenger, Tic Tac. Yeah, I think you need to be on some sort of list, Tulip. I'm like 12 years old, I'm pretty sure. Tiana starts against the Farigaraf and can sword set in front of the giraffe twice while taking crunches with ease. Then our frog decides to show no mercy. Farigaraf, dead. Gardevoir, dead. Espartha, dead. And finally, Florges, dead. Okay, so at this point, I've realized that setup moves are making the game way too easy. So to make the game more challenging, I've decided to ban them for the rest of the run. Wish me luck. Our gym challenge is almost coming to an end, and there's just one more person we need to defeat in order to complete our badge collection. Back to the snowy region we go, and after a quick slide down the mountain, we can enter the battlefield to take on Grusha. Kermit is in need for some love, so we slap an expert belt on our frog and give him the lead. Grusha starts with a Frost Moth, but a quite effective Rock Tomb deals with that rather quickly. Bear Tech is in next, but an Expert Belt super effective Stab Drain Punch is too much for the bear to handle. See, Titan is a much thicker Pokemon, and a Drain Punch can't quite get the job done, but an incoming Ice Spinner also can't kill us, meaning we can take out the Snowball with a second Drain Punch. Last is his Ace Altaria, and expecting a super effective Hurricane our way, Pepe jumps in and can resist the hit well. Altaria then goes for an Ice Beam on Pepe, which we take with ease, but get frozen solid.
great. Tiana now comes in and can eat the Ice Beam before a Liquidation can do just under half its health of damage and get in the defense drop. A Moonblast comes our way and we take the hit better than I thought, meaning on the next turn we can outspeed and finish the Altaria off with a second Liquidation. With every Gym and Paldea now conquered, we turn our attention to Team Star and the Titan Pokemon. Ortega is our priority at this point, so we make our way to the Fairy Base and take him on. Huh, so you're Tic Tac. Okay. Talk about underwhelming. I was expecting someone, I don't know, a little more beefed up? Come on, Ortega. Are you really in a position to question how beefed up I am? Kermit starts again, still holding that expert belt, and one poison jab is all it takes to flatten the Zoomerall. Wigglytuff comes in, only to be poison jabbed to death. Now it's Dutch Bun, and the dog misses his play rough and then falls to a poison jab. Ortega now brings in the Starmobile, and a steel roller does hurt a bit, but we can't hit back with a poison jab. The car then lends a confuse ray on Kermit, who unfortunately ends up hitting himself in confusion. Pepe tags in, taking a magical talk as he switches in and then the Starmobile lands another Confuse Ray. But Pepe remains focused and lands a big Thunderbolt bringing the car low. The Starmobile panics and goes for a magical talk while our frog snaps out of confusion and then drops another Thunderbolt on the car. It then goes for another Confuse Ray but it makes no difference as Pepe delivers one last Thunderbolt obliterating the Starmobile and getting the win. We keep the momentum up and we waste no time taking on the false dragon titan Dondonzo. Pepe is the star for this fight and he just goes on a rampage of non-stop thunderbolts on the Dondonzo in both phases until the fish is finally taken out. The Tatsugiri then shows up but the plan doesn't change and we just keep thunderbolting. From time to time we need a heal with slack off but eventually we can outlast a titan and we get the win. Team Star's now the last thing left to do before we can start the end game and it's Eerie and a fighting crew that we need to deal with. Slippy takes charge and shows no mercy, earthquaking Toxic Croak and taking it out. Passiman jumps in and expecting to be hit with a seed bomb, Kermit switches in, although we get hit with a close combat instead. Kermit goes for a drain punch, dealing great damage and even heals us up, but the Passman brings us back down with a second close combat. But it's okay, as the second drain punch does eliminate the monkey. Lucario comes in and then lands a Dragon Pulse on Kermit before our frog retaliates with a super effective drain punch, getting the KO and healing us right back up. A Nine Lape is next, and a fire punch actually hurts thanks to our dry skin ability, while a poison jab does okay damage back. Expecting another fire punch, Slippy comes back in, but it ends up going for a rage fist instead. The monkey then hits insanely hard with a close combat, but even with a defensive drops, an earthquake is not even close to getting the kill. Because we've hit a Nihilate twice, its rage fist is now at 150 base power. So because of this, I expect him to go for it again. So I bring in Tiana, who can take the hit before an extra sensory can finish off the Annihilate. Last is the Starmobile, and expecting a combat talk, Pepe comes in and can eat the hit. We protect for extra health recovery on the next turn thanks to Leftovers, and then the car sets up with a shift gear, which is kind of scary, before a Thunderbolt does decent damage back. It then goes for another shift gear, and I'm going to be honest, this is not looking good, as a second Thunderbolt brings it to half health. We have no choice but to stay in, and the Starmobile goes for another shift gear, which doesn't even make sense anymore. Whilst another Thunderbolt brings the car low. And then Eerie just completely throws the fight, going for yet another shift gear, allowing Pepe to thunderbolt the car to its death. I have no idea what she was doing, but I'll take it. The Pokemon League is finally upon us and we make our way into the building. The first person to come through the door is none other than Rika, who, let's just say, I have not forgotten about her mocking me back at Kaskarafa. Tiana starts and a quad effective trial blaze destroys Rika's wish cash in one hit. Donphan is next and a liquidation brings it all the way down to its sturdy, while an earthquake brings us down below half health. A second liquidation does take out the Donphan, forcing Rika to now bring in her Doug Trio, who can do nothing but fall to a liquidation. Camera up is then just thrown in to be slaughtered as a quad effective liquidation gets the kill. Last is a clod tire, but it does have water absorb, so I bring in Slippy for free as it goes for a protect. Slippy then lands a big critical hit drain punch, while the Clodsire also hits pretty hard with an earthquake. A second drain punch is just short from the KO, allowing Clodsire to poison Slippy with a toxic, but it's fine as we take it out on the next turn. Not laughing now, are we, Rika? Now it's Poppy, and Slippy starts going straight for a big earthquake, but the Copperizer can survive the hit and then hit back with a big play rough. It's not a problem though, as we just drain punch it on the next turn, taking it out, which then sees Corviknight come in. We switch in Pepe, who eats a Brave Bird, and then paralyzes the Corviknight with static. This means we can outspeed, and then fry the bird with a Thunderbolt. Bronzong comes in, and it gets Thunderbolted, before it goes for an earthquake, which we take well. We then go for another Thunderbolt, while an earthquake brings Pepe pretty low. This time we heal with a Slack Off, 
but an earthquake does bring us back down. Pepe then goes for a thunderbolt, eliminating the bell and bringing in Magnazone. Pepe and the giant Magna go back and forth a few times, but with the help of Slack Off, we can stay healthy and outlast the Magnazone. Last is a Tinkerton, and we can trade hits with a Mini Theory while staying healthy with leftovers and Slack Offs. Eventually, we come out victorious and KO Poppy's last Pokemon. Larry is back, although this time he's using flying type Pokemon. Tiana shows no mercy, going for an Ice Punch, killing Larry's Tropius before it could do anything. Seraptor comes in for revenge, so Pepe comes in, eating a close combat, and then our frog protects for some extra health from leftovers before taking another close combat, then responding with a Thunderbolt, zapping the bird. Larry switches in Altaria, so Tiana comes in and can survive a Dragon Pulse before sending Altaria straight back to Larry with an Ice Punch. Or Ikorio is next, so Pepe comes back in while being hit with a Revelation Dance. Another Revelation Dance does hit, which is fine, as a Thunderbolt from Pepe hurts a cheerleader. This time it goes for a Tita Dance, confusing Pepe, but we stay focused and we heal up with a Slack Off. One last Revelation Dance tickles us before a second Thunderbolt ends the Aura Choreo. Last is his Ace Flamingo, and it goes for a big close combat, which we can't survive, meaning one more huge Thunderbolt from Pepe can finish off Larry's final Pokemon. Hassel now makes his way through the doors, and the Dragon Master is Gita's last line of defense. I give Tiana the Expert Belt, and we start the battle. Hassel leads with a Noivern, but Tiana can outspeed and crush it with a big Ice Punch. Dragalge comes in, and another big critical Ice Punch lands, taking it out. Flapple also has no hope, as a quad effect of Ice Punch destroys it. Now it's Haxorus, and I know I can't one-shot this thing without a critical hit, so we go for a double team, raising our evasiveness, and we dodge a Dragon Claw. We go for another double team, making us even more evasive, but this time the Dragon Claw does land, bringing us below half health. Tiana has no choice but to stay in, and we go for an Ice Punch, which does massive damage, while the Hatcheress goes for an Iron Head, which we can dodge, allowing a second Ice Punch to get the kill. Backscalibur is now in, and this monster terrestrializes, getting even stronger. Tiana goes for an Ice Punch, bringing it below half health, and we get a clutch freeze. This means Tiana can follow up with a second Ice Punch, beating Backscalibur and defeating Hassel. Alright Gita, here I come. She starts with an Emu, but Tiana goes straight for the kill with a Night Slash. Gagoda's next, and an Ice Punch is not quite enough to get the KO, but it goes for a bulk up, so yeah, it dies on the next turn. Now it's Avalug, and expecting a Body Press, Kermit comes in and takes the resisted hit. A critical Drain Punch does insane damage while healing us, but an Earthquake brings Kermit to the brink of death. Kermit does stay in though, and a second Drain Punch smashes the slab of ice. King Gambit is exactly who I wanted to see next, as a quad effective Drain Punch obliterates it and heals us right back up. Now it's for loser, so Tiana tags back in for free, as we're immune to the Psycho Cut, and then Night Slashes the fish to an early grave. Gita then brings in her ace Glamora, and we ain't here to make friends, as Tiana liquidates her Rocky Flower, ending its life, getting the win, and becoming champion. But hold your horses, ladies and gentlemen, as there's still one last boss we must defeat. Well, technically there's a few more battles, but before I go ahead with that, I want to switch Tiana back to a special attacker. First thing we do is collect a bunch of Kelpsy Berries, which drops the attack EVs when consumed. Then we pick up a Modest Mint that is just chilling here under this tree. And finally, we go to the Chansey store and buy as much Calcium as we can for our girl Tiana. As I mentioned before, we have one last battle, which means we need to head to Area Zero and take on Professor Turo. But before we do that, Arvin and his Mabostic must be beaten. Then it's directed Clavel, who needs to be dealt with. After that, Penny wants some of the action and is taken care of. Before finally, it's Namona, who is just as simple as before, getting yet another beating from me. With all the small fry out of the way, we can head to the entrance of Area Zero, which will trigger the Way Home quest with Arvin. Then we all jump on my Maridon, who can safely fly us down to the bottom of Area Zero. Eventually, we reach the lab and head to the deepest part where the final battle can begin. Tiana is in charge, and a single surf from our frog can wash away the Iron Moth. Iron Hands drops in, so Pepe tags in, getting hit with a fake out. A critical drain punch lands, which actually hurts, but a mudshot also lands, dropping its speed. We protect away some drain punch PP before slacking off and getting our HP back and then getting hit with another drain punch. We go back and forth until eventually it starts using thunder punches. We slack off one more time, get hit with another thunder punch for minimal damage, and then we mudshot the Iron Hands to its grave. Now it's Iron Thorns, and an earthquake brings us below half, while a mudshot almost kills a Tyranitar clone while dropping its speed. Pepe is now faster, and a second mudshot takes out the Iron Thorns. Iron Jugglers is next in, so Tiana switches in and takes a Dark Pulse well. Tiana then goes for an Ice Beam, almost getting the kill, but it doesn't matter as she dodges an incoming Air Slash 
allowing her to follow up with a second Ice Beam, taking it out. Now it's Iron Bundle, and knowing a Freeze Dry is coming our way, Pepe comes in and takes a hit. Pepe then takes another Freeze Dry before Thunderbolting the Deli Bird from Wish to Death. Last is Iron Valiant, so I hard switch in Kermit, taking a resisted Brick Break, but unfortunately he does not outspeed, meaning a Psycho Cut will end Kermit's life. Tiana is not happy, coming in and executing the Iron Valiant with a massive Sludge Wave. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our frogs got the job done. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.